Uh, my name is Eugene, so I Android chapter lead at Yolt, which is part of ING. And uh, today, uh, tada, I want to talk about continuous delivery for our Yolt Android project. And uh, just a quick slide about the Yolt, so you have kind of uh, understanding how, how big project. So we are have more than 1 million installs and 1 million uh, registrations. Not a big, but it's okay. We have which supported we have one on full-time QA so basically a uh, philosophy in the team in the, in the companies uh, we uh, don't have QAs which is uh, arguable then we have 3.9 stars in Google Play for Android so which is also not to be much proud about it's not bad but it's also not, not uh, the best we have 99.4 crash less uh, application which is also kind of ish uh, number Project is quite big, so we have uh, 200k uh, uh, Kotlin files, uh, Kotlin lines, and 11,000k uh, 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 Java files. And uh, I hope actually the font is uh, is readable. So like probably there is. A so we have a quite big number of tests. Uh, it's a project three, three years life, and uh, we wrote already like 7,700 7, uh, unit tests. Uh, and the coverage is is okay. So. And I won't talk about the um, about pipeline. So it's our release pipeline. So it's our continuous delivery. Uh, but um, I also want to talk about more, uh, not more, but uh, in the first part of the presentation, I want to talk about uh, mentality by, uh, behind of uh, continuous delivery because I think the tooling is important, but it's only part of, of the stuff to have happen continuous delivery. And I think mentality uh, and uh, techniques. Uh, 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 is also part of actually uh, achieving this. So uh, today I'll talk first part is about this, so about syncing stuff and uh, breaking stuff, and uh, uh, so it's about small incremental and correct parts. Uh, then I'll talk about optimization. So I see the two big pillars about uh, continuous, con continue, continuous, continuously. And then last one, I'll spend a bit uh, on the current our infrastructure. So what kind of so we we pay for this? It's not for free, and uh, not I mean like not money we pay, but uh, <laughs> supporting all the stuff is actually sometimes painful. And uh, I'll talk about this a bit, and uh, I'll talk uh, uh, our plans for the future. And the first part is small incremental and correct changes. Uh, and the uh, idea about this one that. Uh, uh, Idea is but if you have a big feature and you break it in small parts and the small parts actually correct, then you have quite a big chance that your big feature is also correct. Uh, also, you might think about like if you cover your feature with unit tests and they all green, you have also quite a big chance that feature is correct or let's say green. Uh, and uh, the first one is uh, quiz. So uh, please raise your hand if you update your dependencies let's say within a sprint. So for example, yeah, okay, so backend developers probably do it much often, but uh, what about client side? So yeah, you have like a support library coming from the Google, how far are you updating it? Uh, and uh, uh, we do this uh, every sprint, and uh, we do it in the beginning of sprint. There are pros and cons of doing this one, but it's kind of uh, uh, philosophy in f incrementality. So if you do these updates uh, often, you have these uh, API changes, you have some breaking changes, some bugs and fixes. So if you do this often and small, then you kind of on the, on on this track of, of the continuity. Why we do this in the beginning of sprint? Uh, because you still have risk to run into uh, issues, and we have two weeks of time to actually prove uh, the dependency updates actually correct and work. Sometimes, uh, so we spend, we time box it in uh, uh, in half a day, uh, this uh, update task, and if you see in change log or uh, while you're updating, you see some issue, or you see that uh, actually the change is quite bigger, so for example, uh, the dependency change, uh, the change ma major version, then API change, and then you cannot actually handle it like in half a day, then we create a ticket for the future, for the future sprint, and then one of these teams will pick it up and then do it. So some dates, some dependencies don't update, and it's understandable. So, but we try to keep this limit, this this number as small as possible. So, 
the we have a central place about dependencies this is how this uh, looks and uh, so small screenshot and what's most important this central place also keeps uh, notes about like we need to update this in the future or we know about this uh, issue and it will be fixed in that version so please come back to this one later or we don't update this dependency because it breaks something and there's story problems in the future so kind of all this information sits in the central place so then next quiz so how many uh, how many of you have in situation that you cannot release for example is because android is not ready or how many of you have been in situation when you cannot release because backend is not ready or vice versa oh no okay it's not vice versa backend is always can release or how many of you will like everything is ready technically but then you're waiting for marketing or for for third party so and uh, and it's kind of annoying so and uh, okay so numbers not so big but uh, I think you just try to, to have it <laughs> 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 so feature toggles uh, I, I mean like it's probably well known and uh, it's probably wide use but I want to talk about this is actually also in, in theme about incrementality and correctness so incrementality you can do small changes and they are you're not afraid to, to merge because it's behind the feature toggle so it's actually uh, keeps you safe at the same time uh, cor correctness you actually don't release feature is not ready so it helps you so it also brings you like you can do a b testing so if you if you're willing to for or you can do or so it's also quite important that you can do this and then uh, what's more important is also you can actually switch or feature toggle off so if you see that's crashable or uh, it's actually have a huge impact negative impact on the users and of course it's also pricey in terms of that it's kind of might make spaghetti code so you have to be experienced about introducing feature levels in the, in the code uh, and also maintainability you need to, to remove feature toggle as soon as it, it's obsolete uh, and for us it's kind of manual work, not kind of it's manual work, but for some companies they automated it, but okay, so. Then next question is more, so we talked about uh, incremental, incre incrementality, about correctness and incrementality, and now I wanna talk about, about correctness. And uh, I wanna ask you a question like, okay, so when do you release, or so no, like, like let's say how, when do you move ticket in the, uh, in the, uh, in the Jira, for example, from uh, in progress to, to ready. So please shout like what kind of criteria do you use? Okay. But when when do you decide it's in production? So when you decide it's zip like what? Should always be deployed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it, there okay. There's a point of time when you develop it's not deployable, yeah? Uh, If it's a complete feature, it's more difficult and it might hide its way behind the feature toggle and enable that when it's ah, okay, so in, the, in these terms. Mm -hmm. Then I will I will transform my question when do you switch the feature toggle on and when it's visual. But okay, so yeah. let's keep it short. Uh, I was trying to get you to to, to definition of that. And, and uh, the definition of done uh, yeah, maybe it was a trick question, but okay, so that's my, my intention. <laughs> And I think uh, every team should have definition of done, and uh, every team it should be written. So, and why it should be written? That uh, if it's written, it uh, has quite big chance. It was discussed, it was agreed, and it's kind of uh, common stuff. So you cannot say in merge request, "Sorry, I didn't write this because something or something." But uh, yeah, it's, it's agreement and. Uh, uh, I think it's important to, to have it and talk about this and also important to keep it live so if something obsolete or something needs to be added you just always update it and keep it up. So for us uh, maybe something which is not like usual or maybe so we also uh, found that if we add some dependencies which we do rarely but if you add some dependencies we also have to check the license of this dependency and this license should go to a file file so which is yeah so we you need to put this checkbox then we also found not we, we also agreed that translations is is part of our app, so we feature is not visible if you don't have translations. And what is maybe also not uh, uh, an analytics. So analytics we say feature is not visible if uh, analytics is not in the in the feature and it's not actually agreed and it's tested. Some parts as well is uh, 
we test also obfuscated build. <coughs> so we in on Android we can uh, obfuscate stuff. So and it's break sometimes. And we found that it's easier to on the feature uh, on 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 the stage of uh, finishing the feature check uh, the build is passing and work correctly instead of finding this before the release. Uh, uh, and as you as you see, it's actually markdown. So it's basically a file in, uh, it's inside our Git. And when you create merge request for GitLab, uh, you can choose this one, and it will be a nice checklist for you that you check, 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 it's done, done, done. Uh, and of course, I mean, like if you didn't end dependency, you just remove the section about dependency, or if you didn't end, I don't know what else you can emit. Um, yeah. So, next. Can I ask something? Yeah, sure. I, I, would, I was wondering whether you would uh, not want to include the removing obsolete feature toggles in this list as well to make sure that it actually happens when you can. Yeah, but it's how you connect obsolete feature from one feature to to feature to another feature. So how do you connect it? Now I guess that's not feature yeah. based, it's more so sprint based, I guess. Yeah, so basically this is more about like we, it's more definition done of the features yeah. and removing feature toggle might be, might be story for example, might be task and then of course, then all this list probably obsolete about this one because there, when you remove, you only want to check that it's still green, and I don't know what else. Uh, so, <coughs> and this is not only one uh, template which we have for merge request. We have one smaller, and that fits this kind of type of work where you say it's green, last latest develop is in, and uh, basically it works. So, okay, now. Uh, next pillar about um, continue, continue, continuity is automation, and uh, you can automate as as much as uh, it's a lot. Uh, uh, I divide automation to two parts, and one part is uh, uh, check automations. So uh, when you have this uh, the pipeline, so when you do uh, delivery or deployment uh, continuously, you want to actually make sure uh, you don't ship uh, broken stuff and then checks actually essential stuff of this one and uh, optima check automations is like probably the longest or or or, uh, or uh, well known and other stuff so there are not much to talk probably but i'll try to run quickly and it's android so i will talk about some dependencies some technical stuff for android i'll try to make it short <coughs> if you have a questions also there will be a lot of text also or some points so if you have questions about like uh, shutout I, I can explain some some text uh, so first is uh, OWASP check, so we are a um, financial product and uh, we have security risks and uh, we are obliged to have dependency check in, in the project. So basically we run OWASP on every release and we check that all dependencies actually not know, doesn't, know, doesn't have uh, known vulnerabilities in the, in the, in the public uh, registry. And uh, honestly, uh, we didn't find yet any, uh, any so we didn't have any incident about finding stuff about dependencies, and uh, it's probably not like a lot of mobile dependencies are vulnerable or checked. Uh, but backend found a uh, couple of things, and we keep it so for for it's kind of all parts as well. And you see, this only one task, which is okay. Uh, so this how you do this. Most important is we fail on the uh, only medium severity issues. And what most important also, we have all suppression files, so false positives goes to suppression file. And uh, um, yeah, so we also auto play them, so. Then we, uh, as, you, as, you, as I mentioned, we, can, we use Kotlin a lot, so we almost 99, 95% Kotlin, Kotlin uh, based app. And we use detect as static analyzer for Kotlin code. Uh, so it's also part of our check uh, phase. Yeah, detect has also gradual plugin. Uh, what's important here? Uh, it says built upon default config true. So basically, detect comes with some already predefined rules turned <coughs> on. And then we also use another config file, own config file, where we actually override some rules saying like we need to check more, or we actually uh, alter some default rules to some specifics uh, to some our specifics. And also, you see the baseline here. Uh, we actually edit it later in the stage, so we had already some findings, <coughs> and we want to actually continue not to, to to burden and not to fix all of them. So we add the baseline file there, 
so we only get reports about new findings and there was kind of actually job to actually get this baseline smaller and smaller and smaller so uh, we were celebrating a bit like okay so now it's 300 now it's 200 findings now it's 50 hundred, 50 hundred. so i think now we have probably like 30 lines in this file um, and it's uh, on progress oh this is actually a config file uh, so most important here is this one uh, so we actually zero tolerate two issues so if something find it it actually will so by default the tech has a uh, threshold of four or five and we say no so as soon as you find something uh, break the build we need to fix it um rest is kind of yeah nothing small so quite uh, file quite small uh, and then uh lead <coughs> check so we android project so it's a tool uh, most probably used tool for for doing uh, checks on android uh, it's lint uh, it also has, uh, so this kind of use it up in Gradle, and most important here we say also warnings as a rolls through. So any findings, any warnings in Lint, um, stop the build, it breaks, you need to fix it. Uh, if you do multi-model Android project, we have 70, around 70, 75 models now, uh, then we, the kind of hint, you can actually run it only on application module, but then you say check dependencies through. So basically, don't run lint on every module, but you only run on an add module. And we actually didn't compare, but Google claims it will be faster. Uh, last, and probably the biggest one, automated tests. So we have actually three different fa uh, three different jobs in, 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 the, in the pipeline, in check phase, uh, doing automated tests. So we have quite, we, not quite, but we have uh, more or less uh, uh, stable uh, test, param uh, uh, test uh, parameter. So have unit test, uh, UI test, and a bit end-to-end uh, -end test. Uh, and unit test, so quite quite standard setup, GUnit 5, SSJ for assertions, Mokito for the Mokito. Uh, <coughs> so this is interesting line, but that when we started the project, uh, we didn't have experience with UI test, with Espresso, and uh, uh, we wrote a lot of stuff uh, within RoboElectric and uh, probably around the same kind of RoboElectric tests. Uh, but then we actually uh, learned how to write UA tests and now we say we no, don't write any RoboElectric tests at all because they make a lot of problems <coughs> and UI tests for us actually uh, much stable and much more robust uh, stuff. So then um, to know we use Mokito option, uh, experimental option to actually uh, mock final classes because in code all classes by default mock uh, final. This brings this brings actually slowness. Uh, and then this is actually run on every uh, push to, to remote. And I forget to mention, so I'll, I'll mention it. So I'll mention it then end-to-end -end, uh, and UI test is actually same frame same same setup we use Android X test libraries which was before uh, uh, espresso test libraries uh, we use uh, espresso for, for the uh, API for for uh, assertion for for manipulating UI we use barista which is library from um, I don't remember is it Agoda or something no, it's not Agoda but basically they have quite some rules for helping you one of them we use is for flakiness. I'll tell you a bit more about like how we actually get 99% of uh, stability of UI tests. And they have also nice DSL for for uh, for for UI. So and we plan to use it uh, to remove verbosity of of Espresso uh, API. Uh, we use Composer, which is actually uh, um, alternative for Square Spoon, but it's much sta more stable and uh, gives a bit more functionality and use Falcon for screenshots, but again, just two Androiders, so probably all of this kind of uh, not interesting. <laughs> and this is kind of big um, slide about what we do. We use robot pattern for UI, so basically we separate um, test, execution, and uh, manipulating of UI. Then we use uh, mock server responses, so basically uh, UI test uh, is full test of the whole system, so only layer of the of the communication with network is mocked. 
uh, and then basically uh, in every UI test we go through whole application and so we test integrate we int test integrations through all parts of the application uh, we use AVD manager uh, and the emulators so we run uh, UI tests on, on, on machines uh, on emulators uh, before it was it would be a nightmare but Google made a good job about actually making emulator stable fast then we disable animations on emulator, so uh, there is option, develop option for doing this one. Um, we uh, wrote on uh, some injected stuff, so we use uh, uh, dependency injection to actually on start a UI test. Say you are you using mock web uh, network or you use the real network, and you have uh, fingerprint setup or you have something else, some kind of stuff uh, already mocked for us, or we wrote it. And then we all have own rule about um, to, to, to have this kind of wiring, to, to gluing this whole stuff. We wrote a couple of island resources. So uh, to get UI stable test, you have to work a lot with uh, idling. So, uh, and then we restart. We, so I said that we have flatness. So we added actually two times run of UI test. So if first run failed, it will be restart it will start whole whole suit, but not only one failed test. We we think about actually running only failed test, but right now simple was just rerun whole suit, which is uh, uh, we. Uh, let's say. Do you also know what cost the flake is to do the the rerun? What cost? Yeah, we know. <coughs> you you asking why we don't fix the flakiness? Well, yeah, well not. Fixing the flakiness, do you know what's causing the flakiness? I think the all simple flakiness stuff is already found. Uh, so right now, flakiness is uh, race conditions uh, in different, uh, in different. Uh, so some some UI doing for at least like four or five UI, uh, uh, calls, and then they combine by rigs and then something else, and then in some in some situations emulator slower or something that brings uh, flakiness. Okay. But uh, I'll, uh, we uh, so our approach about flakiness. We immediately ignore the flaky test, so we mark it ignore, and then we put on the board of the team who owns this test okay. to solve it. So you're monitoring the flakiness itself. Yeah. Right so able to yeah. And to. Um, um, we have now I think 15 more tests, and they are in progress. So. Uh, so that's why it gives us like 99% of UI stability tests, which is kind of Good. Insane, I think. Then, uh, la 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 la, uh, let's keep it. Oh, yeah, maybe it is important that uh, UI test sits in app modules, so we don't actually spread UI test in different modules. Uh, it it's makes it easier to, to run them. Uh, this is a screenshot from uh, from uh, running of UI tests, uh, so uh, there are 15 in our tests right now. Uh, and if any of tests fail, we also make a screenshot, you can see like, what, what was the result, what was on the screen when it failed, so you can guess more. Also, every of them has a log, and uh, you can see log for for for. Uh, so it's quite robust to actually find out what was wrong. So still, you need to download, you need to look, and so on. But uh, I think 90 percent of the stuff is enough to actually say what was wrong. So and the last one piece is end-to-end -end test. Um, so at some point, we decide like a. Uh, UI tests are nice, but it's only testing client side. So let's actually have also correctness of the whole end to end. And we wrote, uh, I, I think now it's around 15 uh, end to end tests, which is uh, covering all uh, important stuff. So we cover uh, registration for three different countries, we cover at the bank for three different uh, banks, type of the banks, we cover uh, recategorization and, uh, and so on. So it's not many, but um, this is also most flakiness in, in, the, in the setup. That's why we don't run them on every push, but we run them only nightly or on demand. Okay, but it was set up, so we use the same pattern robots. So we just reuse same robots that we use for UI tests for end to end tests. Then we uh, really mock a bit small bits, like we mock, for example, a uh, fingerprint, which is not available on the emulator, or was not available on the emulator. Then, as I said, we cover this uh, stuff, and uh, we use this quick registration. So basically, as in, in previous the uh, in previous talk was saying that majority of tests actually don't need to pass registration. 
and uh, okay, I didn't say about UI test. UI test actually immediately fires screen, which is that you have to test. So it's beauty to have espresso. And uh, so basically, if I want to test recategorization, I just fire screen where my transactions. So I don't actually go through whole flow of application. But here we decided like we don't mock, or we don't intercept much, and we go as a real user. So every end-to-end -end test start from registration. But it's nice, I mean, like, we don't, yeah? Continue, but. Okay. It's nice that we actually make sure, like, it works, everything, but at the same time, it slows down a lot, and that's why we actually decide, like, okay, so we will, how to say, we will accept that uh, tests which not require registration will go to the quick registration, because we already have tests for registration, so we say we are good. <coughs> and that speed up us, like, twice, so we, we just quickly go to, to dashboard, doing it so skipping the registration and what's important also we clean up uh, test data every after every end-to-end -end test so nothing left on the back end it's not much but still we feel we 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 felt that we want to go clean way question yeah why is this the most flaky part because of the back end because of the back end yeah so because uh, uh, a lot of things are involved and uh, because we also run this in, in against uh, integration and integration uh, should be stable, but it's sometimes not. And uh, we even found the time in in day when when it's less flaky, <laughs> but still. Uh, when uh, is that time of day? It's eleven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so um, we we want to switch this to acceptance environment now, and um, uh, I think it will be much more stable. So we will forget about. Right now, uh, you get like maybe 50 or 40% of the time it's, it's failed, and you say, like, you're going inside and you see a screenshot about somewhere one of the calls failed or something. Okay, so uh, also important to say about automated checks. It's not actually che automated, it's about checks or about how we tolerate our uh, warnings. So we say uh, uh, treat uh, warnings as errors for compiled. So basically, our loop is free from warnings. Uh, it's nice. That uh, or if you have long log, you don't actually see like kind of words. I mean, like, it's really nice practice, and I think you should try to do it because it brings so much actually, uh, how to say, feeling about you in control. Uh, so next, talk about other automation. So uh, that was easy, not easy, but uh, the the check parts usually most covered, most known, most talked, uh, most. Somehow. So it's like a lot of articles, a lot of stuff. Rest is less covered, but uh, you cannot go, you cannot have pipeline which is partially automated, so everything should be automated. So s general talks about uh, automation scripting. So uh, Gradle usage is okay. So Gradle usage use Gradle as a, as a, your automation tool uh, is nice because it's actually super flexible, cross platform. Uh, I mean like whatever so uh, the downside of this one if you run it on docker you have to include uh, gradle or it will be downloaded which is slow down your stuff uh, for android downside of using the gradle uh, we have android gradle plugin which requires to have android sdk installed on the machine so basically every task inside of your gradle will require will evaluate and find the android gradle plugin which evaluate will find i need sdk Basically, all kind of automation required to have more image or run a machine which has Android SDK installed. That's, I think, the biggest drawback of using Gradle. That's why we start using, actually, bash, <coughs> bash scripts. And uh, uh, bash scripts are OK if you have uh, going, I mean, like, if you run, if your CI uh, going in, so if you use it on Linux or only Macs, and we do this, and that's why we can just use the bash scripts which is, at some point, it's it's remove limitation about the uh, SDK, uh, um, but at the same time, it brings, uh, you have to manage the scripts, you have to know someone who, you have to have a guy who actually flew in the, in the bash scripts, and uh, it's, it's fun and pain sometimes, so we also thinking about maybe to go to Kotlin script, which will be also cross-platform, will be also manageable language, if you know, uh, great APIs, uh, will be a bit slower, uh, but 
maybe we will pay for this. Uh. So then, uh, the other automation, so uh, signing automation. So and uh, we sign you kind of balancing between like where to put the key. So how to use it, you will put it, you, of course you don't want to commit it in a repository, so you will put it maybe sound site in some folder on the machine, or you will have it in, in, in the secrets of your CI, and it will be pulled down. We went even further, we were kind of paranoid, and uh, we took Yubico key, the hardware, and one of the uh, uh, mode of this hardware, you can put key on it, and it's not extractable. So you can use this key, uh, to sign stuff, but you can't get key outside. So basically, we wrote a task where we use zip line, we use signing, uh, jar sign, to communicate with this hardware. And uh, some, at some time, it's kind of beauty, like, oh, we're, we're safe. And another side, uh, you have to have this key, you have to, to, to this machine is only one, so you, you kind of limit it if you kind of want to build something parallel. And then uh, might be also problem if this machine is public, is somewhere sitting, they need to, to, to do some kind of prevention from leaking, from from disappearing this uh, hardware. Uh, then uh, automation of notification it was easy. Uh, so just hook from uh, from CI to Slack, and then you see a nice Slack message about the failed or, or success with some details about what exactly failed. And uh, what if we automate everything, so why not automate other things we should have? And we actually went down to actually have uh, Git automation. So we use Git flow for, for, for branching model. And then we saw like, hey, we have actually, we use, we always start release from dev branch, we always start hotfix from master branch. Uh, so why not also automate this stuff? So we wrote uh, bar scripts uh, to manipulate in Git. So bam, you press the button and from that commit, you actually create a release branch or hotfix branch. And then if when this will create another pipeline for release on hotfix, and when you decide I need to finish my hotfix or release, you have another button, finish release, depends on, on the branch name, finish release or finish hotfix, and bam, it's merged to, to master and to dev, it bumps versions, did you change log updates, and so on, so on, so quite nice. So Next one is uh, screenshots automation. So uh, marketing guys actually came to us and uh, saying like, hey guys, we want to actually automate also screenshotting. So let's make a pilot. We want to automate stuff. And uh, we have this in the pipeline. We don't use it often, almost never, but uh, at least we have this possibility. So subset of UI tests will be uh, run by this uh, button. It will make screenshots, uh, nice screenshots. We use uh, fast line, which will add actually frame and uh, it will be put in some in Dropbox, Dropbox folder for, for the marketing. So. And um, we also automate localization. So we have a tool which we use for central place for localization, which is super nice. And we also automate, we wrote like a task for Gradle to pull, the, uh, to pull down the translations. And we have a process around the translation. So it's also like a grid uh, between us and uh, designers and translators how we start translations, how this actually go into the feature and so on. So to remove kind of uh, slowness and uh, dependencies and, and so on, and tools quite much, so I recommend it. It's a bit expensive, but uh, uh, maybe also come back to here. So uh, we, I don't know, let's go here. So talk about infra and now talk about infra. So we have uh, local machines. Uh, in the beginning, when we were in phase startup, and we didn't have a, um, a pool of machines in, in, the, in the cloud, we use uh, local machines. We installed SDKs and tools, and it's still there. So it's majority of the tasks also run on this on this infra. Oops, 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 oops. So uh, these uh, uh, tests uh, sign the list because it's required physical key. Uh, is uh, and, uh, yeah, and it's, it's, so this run on local machines and detect, for example, uh, dependency check. No, so, so dependency check also in local detect uh, uploads, sign uh, not signing the notification, and the git stuff is run in, in, in Docker. Uh, so, oops, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, no. 
so uh, um, so we use and uh, uh, AWS pool machines and also local machines. We use a Gradle Remote Build Cache, so which is quite handy. Uh, so Gradle, you don't need to use Gradle Enterprise, but you Gradle gives you uh, a Docker image. You put it somewhere available for your Gradle builds. <coughs> then uh, Gradle has this caching mechanism where it will try to use result of the previous jobs is if input of the job is same, which really little speed ups uh, things. Then for us was actually challenge to record build times so uh, uh, by default you don't have any kind of you, you can have like uh, total build times but it's not interesting at some point we found that uh, our compilation time is growing 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 so it becomes annoying at that time we decided to start modularization so before we had like monolith app now we have 70 plus modules but at the same time it was important to actually measure time in so like if we improve it or not so we actually added uh, build time so we, we we have a report which actually show us how time actually spent and we can draw some some conclusions about this one and the payment of this one all stuff uh, um, first of all it's uh, the machines uh, needs to be connected to to some central server so they need to have VPN and when it disconnects or something you 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 kind of spend a lot of time actually to find kind of old network issues whatever it doesn't happen often but when it happens it's kind of day of nightmare to actually to restore stuff or find out troubleshoot what actually happened so uh, next slide i will show how we want to improve it uh, and then also because it's local machines we we didn't do any automation of the provision of these machines so it's everything done by hands so we are lucky that our dependency is downloadable, so tools downloadable, but some things are not actually downloadable, and then you have to do this or manual or have a script or uh, something to actually to to keep these machines up to your to up to date for some things. It doesn't happen often, but when it's time, you kind of SSH to six different machines and you do the the, the command line there, which is not nice. Then. How we actually want to, oh yeah, uh, I, I forgot actually to add the, to the paint stuff. Uh, <coughs> to the paint stuff, uh, okay, so I said UI is quite stable, but still the 1% of flatness. For, for example, we write nightly uh, uh, um, release build, and that fails, for example, the, the dependency, you saw the exclamation mark, the dependency plugin is not really good with, uh, with uh, 70 modules at the same time, so if you run check the pen, check OWASP checks in, against 70 modules, sometimes it fails because of some networking. And we have, uh, we call it babysitter, so we have a guy who is actually two, one sprint actually taking care about, he's doing a list train, so it's a special role to do the list train, but he's also responsible to look into some kind of uh, uh, problems, errors, uh, and uh, he's the first guy who is actually going to this loss and see like why it's why it's why it's failed and sometimes it's kind of a pain. So to fix stuff, uh, to make it smoother. So we want to actually completely uh, decommission the, the local stuff. So we want to go completely to the cloud. And we have two options, or we will utilize our US uh, you, uh, your AWS proof from the backenders. But there we need to actually support. Uh, we don't control. We don't have access. We need more powerful machines. So right now, I tried just to run it, and it always fails because of the memory issues. And uh, the, the the machine in the AWS pool is quite weak. It's one one processor, and I think three, three gigabytes of, of memory. And for us, we kind of really memory consuming, so we need at least eight gigabytes of the memory. And uh, we want to use parallelization, so we will ask give us at least two three processors for different machines. So. Uh, or we will go to third party like Bitrise, which will uh, uh, solve a couple of things, which will uh, uh, handle Docker images for us. So this approach about AWS, we still have to manage Docker images. With third party like Bitrise, we we give it to them, uh, and uh, maybe simpler solution. Maybe but at the same time cost. At the same time, we need to rewrite our YAML files to different files. So we still kind of in decision why where so we tried this option first and if it didn't fly well then we will go to be tried. Then um, we want to also go to Firebase test lab. So right now we manage emulators ourselves. 
sometimes they flake also. So sometimes actually 99% uh, UI tests are stable, but sometimes simulator flakes. So sometimes hardware, sometimes slowness, sometimes uh, emulator hang. You don't know where, so we 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 saw these situations and we still don't know solution. So that's why we're going to uh, Docker when Docker shutdowns. It's actually shut down simulators and shutdowns everything. Or going to Firebase Tesla will at least help us with this kind of situation where hardware is unstable. And there are also random, not random, but some things from the pipeline. Like we want to go to signing, distribute Google signing to remove the dependency on this hardware. We want to go to even more hardcore stuff, so we want to automate also checking of new permissions of, uh, of uh, content providers and other stuff which you want to be in control in your application. We want to uh, automate dependency checks, so as I said, we do it every sprint. We have a gradient plugin which gives us this version, a new version, but at the same time, then you do the manual stuff, you just update these versions manually. So we want to make automated. So maybe it will create a merge request with all updated versions, and you run to change the list, change log of these dependencies, and you say, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, or such like. Uh, then probably last one. Uh, right now, uh, findings or failures you need to go to the logs, uh, but we want to actually also uh, automate stuff that it will actually put on MR findings like uh, detect findings you specifically say this line or this line is this line is problematic and I think that's it for my talk so if you have a questions uh, uh, shall yeah and how do you do that with the feature flags and releasing the app to production do you have kind of like a version check in production for the app already because otherwise you would have multiple versions in production for example for Android uh, with tons of feature flags out there, how do you limit the amount of? So uh, backend has kind of uh, kind of you know, my, my backend has a service which is responsible for feature toggles, and every feature can be by default on for everyone, by default off for everyone, uh, on for specific users and off for specific users, and then. Uh, specific users means it's uh, Android specific version uh, and uh, the guy with specific uh, user ID and they now building also uh, kind of automation function that says by this user ID you in the packet X uh, so to, uh, to, for, to have uh, uh, you, um, A P testing so to switch to those uh, for, for specific groups. Okay, that's clear not like before using the feature toggles, but how do you prevent having 20 versions of your app out there in the world uh, installed on different phones? You also have a limitation, a kind of like a service check that checks, okay, uh, you need to update your app because the minimum version needs to be... Ah, uh, you mean that, uh, so uh, if uh, all the client receive feature we don't understand, he just ignores it? Um, no. If, if I understand it correctly, you're able to release almost bi-weekly a new app, meaning that you will have 26 apps a year, uh, yeah. versions. Yeah. So if that means, it could also mean that you could have 20 different versions out in production of yeah. your app. How do you limit that? So um, yeah, okay. So we have in place also a mechanism about uh, limiting the versions, so we can uh, build in. So uh, you can say uh, stop. Uh, force users on this on this version to update, and then you will see on login uh, and, and the dialog like the version is always update. But I, I don't see the problem about having like uh, ten different versions up out there with different feature toggles. Uh, yeah, you know, the old plan will just ignore a new feature toggle. Um, uh, the feature toggle is uh, uh, you, you say which version from you should do, turn it on. So basically, if you have a port which is by feature toggle but it's not ready, it will be not turned on. And then you lose probably AB stuff. So if you want to actually, so if you want to have real AB test, you go, you, or left and right, for example, then you need to have latest version to draw conclusion. But they also have in this AB testing, they can say only, it only included to, 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 to check, not to check, to do evaluation only versions like this. Then they have kind of clear experiment. Okay. 
Maybe we, so maybe talk later. I don't understand the question. So. No, 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 it's okay. clear. Thanks. Other questions? Yeah. 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 So you talked about uh, automating stuff. Yeah. We have a whole de definition of done that's done manually. Yeah. Why not automate it? Yeah, why not automate it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, if you, s we can come back a bit later. It is automated. So for example, uh, uh, right now, bam, 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 bam. So right now here you say end to end test are okay. And because we don't run end to end test on every commit, uh, on every push, uh, and yet it we run nightly or on demand. That's why when, for example, you touch, they they unstable and they expensive. That's why we say if you just change the button, there are probably no reason to run end to end test. And now we're thinking actually to run end to end test also uh, on every push. And then we will remove this one because it will be red if end to end test failed. So this line will be gone. So all these lines here, uh, uh, OWASP check also manual, so it doesn't run every test. And for example, the yeah, license check, and it's, it's, yeah, I don't think, you can automate, but it's probably would be quite a big effort. Uh, uh, well, coverage, license check. Coverage is, actually coverage is true, so we can actually remove coverage because coverage is checked, uh, and it will fail if it's below the, the, the threshold. Um, we can also, of course, automate, like, what else? Of, of, we, we can run obfuscating build uh, and check, for example, run UI test, and then we can remove this line as well. Uh, it's possible, so. But yeah. uh, everything in this list, I think, um, uh, okay, change log is updated. We can also check that there is line in change log, for example. But again, still correctness about this line, you can get. You can yeah, but also for the, for the approvals, the manual approvals, you can make the, um, give the merge permissions to the uh, product owner. Yeah. Then the product owner is the one who can merge to the master. And for example, the end-to-end -end test, if you put um, the end-to-end -end test as a manual step at the end of the pipeline, then you can never merge to master unless the pipeline is green. That's a, that's a good one. So we can actually put, uh, but same time, if we will put them as last step in the pipeline, then we will not see in the Slack. We, we can actually also add Slack uh, before end-to-end -end test, so you know it's, it's so yeah. actually it's, good, it's a good suggestion. Yeah. You can still run the end-to-end -end 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 test scheduled, like, Whenever it's a good one. So mm, we uh, about giving only permission to product owner. I think it's a bit too much. So I mean, like uh, we before we had like um, we do merge request review, and then you say um, like you comment, comment, comment. You give some uh, comments, and then you say okay, this is cosmetic. You cannot make it wrong. So I mean, like change this one. Yeah, or if you have something like really uh, conceptual. Uh, then uh, we have agreement that uh, okay. So if you have something conceptual as comment, you don't actually put the sums on it. So we wait until the guy changes something, or you, you go to discussion. And if everything is just cosmetic, you just put the sums on and you approve it. So you you actually trust the guy will just do this job, these cleanups, and then just merge it himself. But now uh, the 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 audit came and say like no no you should actually kind of there should be pair of files to check every change, even this cosmetic change. And now we kind of situation that we approve only everything meant to say. So it's a slow down us, us a bit, not a bit about the load, because now everyone need to fade, chase out, like, did you do this, did you do this? Please, please, please. And uh, giving this to the product owner, it will be even more, more slower. So you know, like, uh, that's why. Yeah. Okay. But at the same time, yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe if we just say, yeah, you know that merge might fail, but we can also try to pre-merge it, try it, and so it's will maybe less chance to fail and so on. But still, kind of yeah. 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 And also for the change log, there are, are there's a, um, a, sm a small plugin for Git. Yeah. And if you format your Git commits in the, in the right order, it will it will just generate your change log. No, but okay. So change log is just a feature name, and maybe we don't even put a Jira. Oh no, we put Jira tickets, but uh, uh, but. Having like ten different changes in one change in the change log, I don't know. Uh, you you saying that you actually you pick up the specific comment and say it should be go to change log. Or yeah, so it, it depends on what what you put in the in the in your commits and how you configure yeah, the plugin. We can we can we, we can, can see about it. Yeah. Okay, cool. And for the uh, you you talked about um, that you're using bash scripts yeah. to automate your gradle build. But not um, automate, but to avoid running the cradle. Yeah. yeah, but uh, but um, 
in essence you can use Kotlin to script your Gradle build because Kotlin uh, is natively supported by Kotlin and by Gradle yeah. and then you can if the, if the Gradle Android plugin doesn't support it yet you can just add the feature to download the Android SDK for example I, w I would say no, no, avoid no. adding a no. a a anything extra scripting around Cradle. No, no. Okay. So the problem is that the problem is that um, so before we had kind of small Gradle files, which you can say Gradle minus b file and do this task. Right now with new Gradle, every Gradle file should <coughs> have a settings. So you cannot say minus b this file. It should always have some settings pre interface. That means we put a lot of actually we decide not to write a lot of settings files. But we put this task as apply apply to general f to, to common file, and there also Android Gradle plugin. And Android Gradle plugin required to have SDK installed, and if we will do the load SDK on the machine, I mean like it's like 200 megabytes, so it will slow down everything. Uh, and if if it's in a Docker, for example, of course we need to create Docker image with this mm -hmm. SDK, and then we will then we will actually start. Uh, running stuff inside of Docker stuff, and then we can actually come back to the to the Gradle uh, because we kind of find to to have Docker image downloaded for first time for some for something. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, we can use Kotlin script as I said, which will not require Gradle. It's just Kotlin C minus file, and it means you need only JDK JDK installed, and compiled JDK Kotlin C installed, which doesn't require anything. It's really small. And then or, it's or you can easy plugin, so that's why we're thinking about moving from Bash to, to Kotlin to, because we know the Kotlin. And Gradle is not a problem, so we we know Groovy, so we write Groovy scripts quite easy. And you can do your Gradle builds there in Kotlin these days. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's not nice, at least yet, yeah. because the ID support is not yet perfect and other stuff. Uh, so we might go, but still uh, we on the Gradle, on, the, on the Groovy side. Okay. Other questions? Okay. I hope it wasn't boring, so thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>